In this video, we are going to talk about everything you need to know about Angola. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Angola, officially the Republic of Angola, is in South Central Africa. It is bordered by the DRC to the north, Zambia to the east, and Namibia to the south. Its west coast faces the Atlantic. Cabinda, one of its provinces, borders both the Republic of Congo and the DRC. Luanda is Angola's capital. From the 16th century until 1975, Angola was a Portuguese colony. From 1975 to 2002, Angola was embroiled in a brutal civil conflict. Angola is the second largest oil and diamond producer in Africa. Its infant mortality and life expectancy are among the lowest globally. The government struck a peace accord with a flex guerrilla group in northern Cabinda, which produces 65% of Angola's oil. It's still going. In addition to the semi-desert Atlantic coastline that borders Namibia's skeleton coast, Angola has a heavily populated rainforest interior, rocky mountains in the south, a Cabinda exclave in the north, and densely populated northern coast and north-central river valleys. Luanda, the country's capital and commercial hub, is a huge port city on the northern coast with traditional African architecture and contemporary industrial complexes. A country plagued by war, land mines and famine, Angola was often dependent on the international community for basic survival. It is a country rich in natural resources, including precious stones, metals, and oil, it is one of the top oil producers in sub-Saharan Africa. Angola is the largest and wealthiest of the Portuguese-speaking African states, albeit its current borders were only established in 1891. The anti-colonial struggle began in 1961 and ended in 1975. Our land, our mother, wrote Agostino Neto, Angola's first president, from prison in 1950 SIXS we must return. After a 27-year civil war, Nito's liberated Angola Angola independent was no more. After the conflict ended in 2002, Angola had more optimism for a peaceful future than it had in the preceding quarter century. Land For reference, the Cabinda exclave is located along the Atlantic coast, just north of Angola's border with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Angola is bounded on all sides by the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Zambia, Namibia, and the Atlantic Ocean. Relief From a narrow coastal plain, escarpments climb to rocky mountains, which gradually slope down to the continent's core. The coastal plain is about 125 miles 200 kilometers, wide south of Luanda and about 15 miles 25 kilometers, wide near Benguela. The B Plateau, east of Benguela, is a rough quadrilateral of land rising above 5,000 feet 1, meters, and covering around one-tenth of the country's surface. Smaller and lower elevated Melange Highlands lie north of the Hula Plateau, while the Hula Plateau itself lies south of the Melange Highlands, 2,300 meters. In the eastern two-thirds of Angola, a flat plateau drops to between 1,650 and 3,300 feet, 500 and 1,000 meters, at the border. Mount Moko in Wambo is the country's highest point at 8,596 feet, 2,620 meters. Drainage the Lunda Divide separates north and south flowing rivers on the plateau. In the northeast, rivers like the Quango, Quango, run into the Great Congo River, which divides Angola and the DRC for the final 90 miles, 145 kilometers. The Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, Angola's longest river, drains the plateau's center region. It falls into the sea around 40 miles, 65 kilometers, south of Luanda, after winding its way through the escarpment between the Melange Highlands and the B Plateau. The Kunena River Kunena, drains the southwest of the country, before turning west and breaking through the escarpment at Ruakana Falls, where it flows into the Atlantic Ocean. In the country's far east, certain rivers fall into the Zambezi, which itself passes the Kazambo region. Other rivers feed the Akavango swamps in NW Botswana. Small rivers in the south feed the Etosha Pan's internal drainage system, while others drain the escarpment's steep western slopes. Soils The coastal plain is made up of alluvial, chalk, and sand, with oil-bearing deposits in the north. Along the escarpment, 
Precambrian crystalline bedrock, 540 million to 4 billion years old, develops, and mineral deposits occasionally surface. This terrain has been heavily eroded, and laterite deposits are abundant. The eastern two-thirds of the country's plateau is covered by barren Kalahari sands. Diamonds are found in river gravels in the northeast, as are occasional kimberlite pipes. Climate Angola's climate is tropical with a dry season. The yearly motions of the rain-bearing intertropical convergence zone, the cold Benguela current off the coast, and elevation all influence the climate. Rainfall is the main predictor of climate, as it falls rapidly from north to south and towards the shore. The Mayambi forest in the Cabinda exclave receives the most rain, around 70 inches, 1,800 millimeters, whereas Wambo in the B Plateau receives 57 inches, 1,450 millimeters. While Luanda gets around 13 inches, 330 millimeters of rain, the southernmost area of the coastal plain gets only 2 inches, 50 millimeters. Summer is from September to May in the north, and December to March in the south. Droughts plague the country, particularly the south. Temperatures, unlike rainfall, decrease with distance from the equator, closeness to the shore, and elevation. In Soyo, at the Congo's mouth, the average yearly temperature is 79 degrees Fahrenheit 26 degrees Celsius, while Wambo, on the B Plateau, is 67 degrees Fahrenheit 19 degrees Celsius. Here are the five things you want to know about Angolan and the Angolans. So let's start. Number 5. Dancing. The Angolan are crazy about music and dancing. Kizamba, Taraxinha, Semba, and Kaduro are the main music genres in Angola. There is a whole culture around Kizamba in Angola, kids learn to dance since they start walking. You see the street sellers dancing in the middle of the road. Dancing is part of being Angolan. Semba is a high-tempo, very energetic, fast-paced and upbeat music. It's a dance that gets its name from Masemba, a word which means a touch of the bellies, the motion that characterizes this type of dancing. Semba is primarily carnival music, some people even say that the Brazilian dance samba is a derivation of semba. Kizamba is a slower and more sensual derivation of semba. The word kizamba in Kimbundu language, one of the most spoken languages in Angola means party. Kizamba was also influenced by Sun Cubano, Milonga and Tango, during the presence of Cubans during the Civil War. Therefore, Kizamba has been described as the African Tango. Sometimes Kizamba is combined with Taraxinha, a sensual, almost sexual, and slow movement. Taraxinha dancing partners are locked in a rather tight, sensual embrace and dance in a very slow manner, almost not moving. Kuduro is an Angolan music genre, and that combines Caribbean music like zouk and soca with Africa percussion sounds. The name of the dance refers to a peculiar movement in which the dancers seem to have hard buttocks. The history of Kuduro has come about in a time of Angolan civil unrest and provided a means of coping with hardship and positivity for the younger generation. Number 4. Funerals. Even if you are distant family, like an uncle of your uncle, your presence is mandatory. A funeral can last seven days, with several rituals, but it usually includes a big feast with a lot of food and drinks. They have to provide food for all the family that comes and visits during the funeral. The concept of the funeral is a feast or a party which is a very unusual way of grieving for our Western-slash-European ways. Number 3. Proposing Day or Alambamento. The proposing day or alambamento is a huge thing. There is a big party with the whole family where the boyfriend asks for the hand of his girlfriend. The groom goes to the bride's house, asks for the hand of his girlfriend to the family, and he must get the bride's family approval. Before the proposing day, he is given a list of what he must be able to obtain until the day. The groom-to-be is expected to offer a huge variety of gifts, depending on what the family of the bride stipulates. The gifts usually include money, the bride height in beer boxes, bride's height in juice pallets or cokes, if you want to marry an Angolan woman make sure you choose a short one, one goat, one gold necklace, a suit for fathers and shoes for the mother. But the gifts can vary from family to family, the richer slash more important the family of the bride, the bigger the requests will be. Number 2. Taxi Vans, Candangaros. 
Candangaro's private shared taxis is the name given to the vans, usually a Toyota Hyus, painted in blue and white serving as taxis, transporting people between different spots. They are the true public transport in Angola, there are no stipulated stops, normally they stop anywhere and everywhere, advertising through the window where they are going to. Frequently Candangaros have very bad driving habits, doing the weirdest and unimaginable things, like driving on the sidewalk. Number 1. Vanity. Angolan men and women are very very vain. Women often go to the hairdresser every week and change their visual nearly every weekend. And when we say change visual we mean change it radically. Sometimes you don't even recognize the same person from one week to another. From short hair to long, from brown to any other color. Men like to have their shoes spotless. Through the street, you can find shoe shiners so you can have your shoes always shiny. Women like polished nails, and the bigger the better. Men likewise fix the nails, but they just use transparent nail polish. Normally it's street boys that have a basket and offer the service who paints the nails. The Chinese also provide this service, but they usually have nail salons. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.